Hello, my name is Zamira Maya and welcome to 100 Stories Deep. Today I'm reading The Pomegranate Prince by Rita Eldada. I've chosen this story because I love a fairy tale and this is one that I found surprising and discovered as an adult. So this is The Pomegranate Prince. There once lived a sultan who wished his daughter to find a husband. The princess was very beautiful, but because she was the sultan's only child, he had spoiled her, so she had grown up to be selfish and unkind. Nevertheless, when word went out that the princess was in want of a husband, the princes travelled from far and wide, over deserts, mountains and seas, to try and win her hand in marriage. The sultan, who loved his daughter very much, wanted her to marry a man that she loved, so he invited all the princes to a great feast at the palace. The servants prepared the most magnificent meal for all of the guests, which included many plates of pomegranates. That was a specialty of the kingdom. One of the princes, who had traveled a very long way to see the princess, had never seen pomegranates before. When he first tasted the sweet red seeds, he didn't think he'd ever eaten anything so delicious in his life. He ate all of the pomegranates on his plate, and when one seed fell onto the floor of the palace on the pristine marble floor, he bent down to eat that too. The princess, having seen what the prince had done, pointed at him and gave a shriek of laughter. Then she turned to her father and said, this man, he cannot be a prince. He acts as though he's poor. A beggar's come into my house to eat food off the floor. Everyone at the feast joined in with the princess's laughter and the pomegranate prince fled from the room, humiliated. He prepared to return home, but he could not rid his mind of the princess's beautiful face, nor her cruel words. Despite himself, he had fallen in love with her, but he also wished to teach her a lesson. It so happened that this prince was a beautiful singer and that his voice was so resonant that it was known to stop people in their tracks, bringing smiles to their faces and tears to their eyes. So one night when all in the palace were sleeping, the prince crept into the garden below the princess's window and began to sing. Roused from her sleep by the enchanting melodies, the princess went out onto her balcony and looked down upon the faraway figure singing in her garden. You have a beautiful voice, she said to him. You may stand in the middle of the garden to sing to me. So the prince stood among the flowers and sang until his voice was hoarse. And the princess had drifted off to sleep once more. The next night, the prince returned to the garden when all in the palace were sleeping and began to sing again. This time, the princess was lying awake thinking of the mysterious man who had serenaded her the night before. So when she heard him, she hurried to the balcony. You have a beautiful voice, she said to him again. You may stand on the balcony to sing to me. So the prince climbed up to the window and sang in the shadows until his voice was hoarse and the princess had drifted off to sleep. On the third night, the princess was waiting for the mysterious man and no sooner had he opened his mouth than she ran to greet him. You have a beautiful voice, she said to him again. You may come into my bedroom to sing to me. So the prince snuck into the prince's bedroom and sang until his voice was hoarse. But the princess did not sleep. Even in the light, she did not recognise him as the pomegranate prince from the feast. For she had seen so many suitors that day, he just didn't recognise Instead, she had completely fallen in love with this stranger and his beautiful singing. Who are you? she asked him. I must better know the man who sings to me so sweetly. What is your name? The man considered for the, for the moment and then decided on the most foolish name he could think of. Brombu, he said. My name is Brombu. <laughs> oh, Brombu, I love you, said the princess. We must be married. Alas, said the prince, I cannot marry you, princess, for I am so very poor, like a beggar, and the only way I survive is by singing for coins. 
I do not care that you are poor, declared the princess. Although my father will never allow me to marry a beggar, we must run away and marry. Let alone. So the princess and the prince, still pretending to be the beggar, Brombu, ran away and were married in secret. Then instead of taking her back to his magnificent palace in his kingdom far, far away, he led her to a little run-down shack at the very edge of the city. This is where you live, asked the princess, looking at the shack in horror. Oh yes, said the prince, I cannot afford a nicer house. And because the princess loved the Brega Brambu, she followed the prince into the shack. Inside, it was dark and damp, and there was a strange smell coming from the kitchen. When the princess looked more closely, she saw that there were small piles of mouldy fruit and rotten vegetables and a little sack of grain that looked as though it were there for several years. This is what you eat, asked the princess, looking at the food in horror. Oh, yes, said the prince. I cannot afford better food. And because the princess loved the beggar Brombu, she agreed that she would eat it too. The trouble is, the prince said, as they prepared for their dinner, I am so poor that I cannot afford any plates, so we must eat off the floor instead. As he emptied the little sack of grain onto the floor, the princess looked at it in horror. But because she loved the beggar Brombu, she bent down, picked up a piece of grain from the dirty wooden floor of the shack and ate it. Triumphantly, the prince pointed at her, shrieking with laughter, and said, This girl, she can't be a princess. She acts as though she is poor. A beggar's come into my house to eat food off the floor. As she recognised her own words, the princess realised that man that she had fallen in love with and married was not a beggar called Brombu. He was the pomegranate prince, whom she had humiliated at the palace. She was filled with regret for how cruel she had been and with tears in her eyes begged the prince to forgive her. Despite her harsh words he loved her deeply and could see that she was truly sorry so he took her into his arms and kissed her. Together they returned to the palace to tell the sultan the happy news that his daughter had finally chosen a royal husband. He was so delighted that he arranged another feast even bigger than the last one. Only this time, the pomegranate prince requested that his favourite fruit be served with every dish. Thanks for listening. This book is amazing and there are lots of other stories in here that I would encourage you to read. But the pomegranate prince is cool because the prince uses his hidden talents to attract a princess. So maybe you have some hidden talents that you could be sharing with your friends and your family so I encourage you to do that. You can watch and listen to more stories in the 100 Stories Deep series by subscribing and clicking the link below. Thanks and goodbye.